What's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. First of all, just want to say a big thank you for all the support on the vlogs. Loads of likes, loads of comments, and some of you have said some really nice things. So thank you, everybody. As you can probably tell, I am in a new place. So finally getting settled down. So once I get internet installed, you can expect streams again. So expect a lot more streams on Twitch. If you've not already given me a follow, please go and do so now. So just a quick announcement before we get into things. I spoke with the guys at Raise Your Edge and they are offering a very, very good discount on their Mastering Live Cash Game course. So this course is catered specifically for live poker. So it's got a really good kind of mix between, you know, decent theory and then how you can exploit players. It's got over 25 hours of content. So you get all the preflop strategies as well, including the range viewer. So some of the topics covered are really useful for live cash games, and you won't find these covered in most other courses. For example, how to play in multi-way parts, how to play in limped parts, and how to play when you are deep stacked. You will also get access to the private Discord as well, where you've got some of the coaches and even Ben CB, and you can ask questions and run hand histories and stuff like that. So if you're interested, guys, I will leave the link in the description below. If you use the code WEASELLIVE, you will get $100 off the course. But other than that, guys, please enjoy the video. If you're not already subscribed, please, please go and do so. It takes you two seconds. It really helps support the channel. Still probably about four live vlogs that we're going to be able to publish in the coming weeks. And if you continue with the good support on these vlogs, guys, I'll consider going back to Vegas in the new year and playing even higher stakes. So let me know if you guys want to see it. But enjoy the video, chaps, and I will see you in the next one. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another live cash game vlog. This time, we are at the Bellagio, playing 5, 10, no limit hold'em. So the difference between here and the win where I shot my other vlogs is the cap is lower here. So the maximum buy-in is actually $1,500. So generally, I preferred playing at the win, but Bellagio was much closer to where I was staying. So I would play here when it was like late or I was tired or whatever. Something I haven't covered, which people have asked about in the vlogs, is the rake. And the 5-10 games here and at the win, you pay a $7 fee every 30 minutes. So each part isn't actually raked, it's when they change the dealer, they charge $7 for every player. So we sit down with the maximum of $1,500, and a few hands in, we see a raise and a call in late position, and we look down at ace four suited in the cutoff. Seems like a pretty good hand to squeeze. We block our opponent's strongest four betting hands, like aces and ace king, so I decide to make it $110 to go. The original raiser folds, and the hijack calls, so we go heads up to a flop of queen jack eight with two diamonds. The action checks to us, and I decide to check this one back. So, Villain is actually pretty likely to connect very well with this board. He can have a lot of suited broadways, high suited connectors, maybe some pocket pairs like eights and nines. And when he doesn't hit this board, he's likely to be in very bad shape with hands like, let's say, five, six of spades or under pairs, which we can just try to get to fold out on later streets. And I think it's nice to have some flush draws to check back as well. That way, we are very disguised when we actually hit. Turn comes to four of spades, giving us a pair now, and that hijack fires out a pretty measly bet of just $40. I don't really see too much merit in raising here. The hand can be good, and just seeing a river for a cheap price seems pretty good. And the river comes ding, ding, fucking ding. The ten of diamonds giving us the nut flush, so we only lose now to a straight flush. The only issue is that it's the ten of diamonds, so ace king does get there. With the line that I've taken, I think I'd be expected to have a lot of ace king at a reasonable frequency. So for this reason, I do expect hijack to check a lot, but he goes for chips and fires out a bet of $150. So no question of what we're going to do here, the only question is what size to go. So I don't think shoving's completely out the question. In online games, I think I'd consider all in. We'd turn hands like ace jack with the ace of diamonds and king jack with the king of diamonds into a bluff. But I think in live games, I think bluffs like this are way less frequent. In terms of what I want to target here, basically lower flushes and 9x may be a very sticky set. I still think he's got hands like pocket nines, 10 nine, jack nine, and stuff like that. So I make it $480, just over three X, and Villain thinks about it for about 20 seconds before flicking in the call. We show him the goods, he hits us with the old, ah, dang it. and we scoop a $1,300 pot right out of the gate. A few hands later, we're in the big blind. We see a raise and a couple of calls and lock down at king four suited. Pretty nice hand to defend with multi-way and closing the action. So we call for $30 more and see a flop of ace eight four. So we flop bottom pair and have a backdoor flush draw as well. So I check, hoping to see a cheap turn and our opponents are nice enough to let us see a free one. 
Turn comes the nine of clubs, we check again. The original raiser goes for an $80 bet this time. The hijack calls and both the small blind and I get out of the way and they go heads up to a river. Now, why is this hand in the vlog, I hear you ask? Well, you're about to find out. So the river comes to three of clubs and the original raiser fires out another $80 bet. Hijack raises to $300 and I actually remember thinking that this is just going to be a bluff way too often. It's really hard for him to have any value hands with this line, especially on such a brick river, maybe like ace three suited specifically. Seems like the original raiser agrees with me and finally calls a $300 raise and the guy that raised in the hijack is looking pretty sheepish. He finally turns over his cards and shows 10 jack off for a missed straight draw and jack high and the low jack mucks his fucking cards. The guy literally just bet called the river with worse than jack high. So I guess I won't be leaving this game anytime soon. So to show you the absolute state of this guy, he gets into a three-way all-in a little bit later on. The board runs out ace, ace, eight, jack, five. The other two guys show queens and ace, king. And this guy starts chatting shit about the side part. He forces the dealer to count out all three stacks before he turns over his cards. And he proceeds to turn over pocket jacks for a full house, much to the dismay of the guy holding ace, king. Why did you slow roll? It's so unnecessary. Fuck me. Anyway, we pick up Ace King and the low jack a few hands later and raise it up to 30. The hijack and the cutoff come along for the ride, and our slow rolling friend on the button makes it $120 to go. Action folds back round to me, and we're both playing a similar stack. I think we've both got about 2.5k at this point. And against this guy, I'm willing to get all of it in. So I put in the four bets of $340, hijack and cutoff get out of the way, and our strange little friend snaps it off. Flop comes a very sexy King 7 6 rainbow, and in my head, I'm already spending his 2.5k. I size down for a C bet. It's a very dry board. I'm always going to bet range on this this board i think in general king high boards are very good for the aggressors range so whether that's a single raise part a three bet part or even a four bet part it's going to be really good for the aggressor so i fire out a 220 dollar c bet and unfortunately the button folds but still a nice pickup and a very easy decision post flop at this point i don't think i'd lost a single hand i was picking up small parts left right and center was feeling pretty good, even had a couple of rum and cokes and was enjoying myself. I look down at Queen Ten of Spades under the gun, very sexy hand, open it up to 30. Under the gun plus one, this Mexican whale calls, the cutoff calls and the big blind comes along as well. So we go four way to an Ace King three rainbow board and it's a little loose, but I was running over the like everyone at this point. So I thought I'd fire out the one third C bet anyway. We've got a nut shot, backdoor flush drawer and obviously just huge range advantage on this board. The other players just don't have like anything apart from maybe Ace three or threes, but they don't have, you know, really good top pairs or top two. Anyway, it falls to the big blind who pretty much snaps it. And so at this point, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to blast this one off, aren't I? So in comes a brick, seven of hearts, big blind checks. I fire out about three quarters part, $170 and get the job done for another small pot our way. A few hours later, we look down at King Jack offsuit and I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm pretty drunk at this point. So please don't expect perfect poker. There's a race from hijack and the cutoff calls and I decide just to call on the button. Now in online games, I would never call here. I think three betting's fine here in the live game, um, but calling and just taking it post flop with a bunch of goobers is fine as well. Flop comes down king high, both opponents check and I decide to check back as well. I, I think checking is fine. It's hard to get three streets with this hand on most runouts, especially three way. So it's nice to have some hands to check back with for deception. But in all honesty, I think I do prefer a bet. There's loads of hands that are going to continue here that are worse. Turn comes under the 10, action checks to me, and I go for a $40 bet, and only the cutoff calls. And the river breaks out, it checks to me again. I throw in a $100 chip. The cutoff calls it off a muck, saying he had a worse king. And so, like, on this board, I'm probably not going for three streets anyway, given that the 10 paired on the turn. But still, another decent part our way. And another three rum and cokes in. We pick up the aces in early position. So I make it $40 rather than the standard 30, because fuck it, I've had, like, five rum and cokes and I've got aces. And the hijack comes along. Flop comes Jack 9 3 Rainbow. I go for the check here. The hijack's only playing about, I think, 650 or something. So I think check raising, trying to get in just as much as we can on this flop against like Jack X, 9X, sounds like Queen 10. Unfortunately, he does check back and we go to a turn. Turn comes a King of Spades, obviously a good card for our range. I decided to just go to build the pot myself now, so I fire out a big bet of $70. Hijack clicks it to 150 Now, against this stack, maybe there's room to just bang this in. He's not going to fold a hand like King Queen. Maybe if he's got like even the nut flush draw, he just calls it off. But still, I want to keep in any just total nonsense. Plus, we've only got one pair at the end of the day, so it's not like it's a monster, so I just call. 
and the river breaks out and we check a hijack fires out 250 dollars and we don't really beat value here maybe like king queen specifically so i do take a few moments to consider but even though we don't beat value, I don't really see what you can have for value. Maybe like King-9 or a trap set like Pocket 3s. Feels like Queen-10 is going to stab flop pretty often. So I call and Villain announces. Oh, good call. And we flip over the goods and scoop yet another pot. So after winning basically every hand of the night, we get up and wobble over to the cashier and cash out for a total of just under $4,700. Meaning a total profit of $3,160 on the night, the biggest winning session of the trip so far. Just watched the guy roll down his car window, shouting at this other guy and points a fucking gun out the window. Stay classy, America. So I have a view of the sphere as well from my room. Not going to be the best quality zooming in on a phone camera. I don't have a lens good enough on my camera to thing it yet, but tell me it's not fucking cool. I get to see this every night. Detilts me a little bit at least. Oh.